today I want to do a couple things. First of all, I'm rocking the Ray-Bans here. It's really bright out. I'm normally in the woods. Right now I'm in my pasture. I want to test a couple of things out. One of them being my birch goggles here. I got about 15 steps outside of my house and I normally don't wear sunglasses out in the woods. I had to turn around. It was hurting my eyes so bad. It's so bright out here today. So rather than you know grab the sunglasses, which I hate wearing sunglasses in the woods, um, I decided to grab these, test them out. I tested them when I made them, but you know, whatever. Let's get out here and try it. One thing I'll say about these is you really want to be conscious of the glare shooting up through underneath them. You can adjust that, but it is kind of cool because you can, it, they're almost like bifocals. You can kind of look down and, and do a task without your narrow vision. And then another thing with this hat, I can make these slits even smaller and this little thickness of hat is kind of acting in a little tiny way like a brim of a hat. So anyway, this is kind of cool. What I really want to test out today is the shadow stick method of navigation. Uh, basically, from my research, it's going to give you a north-south line. Well, you'll be able to find all four directions, but primarily north-south. In my area, I do not really need to worry about declination that much because basically, you know, north is north. It may be one or two degrees, but it's not a big deal for the type of navigation that I usually do. So, I mean, it's just not that big a, a deal. What I'm going to go do, a perfect day, I'm going to go grab a stick and we'll shove it in the snow and we'll, we'll discuss the method and see how accurate it is. I've got a compass out here and uh, let's just check it out. Okay, the wind's real bad today guys, sorry about this. But anyway, what I've done is, all I did is I've got a standing dead twig right there. And I broke the top off of it. I don't want to yank that out of the ground because our ground is super frozen. I don't know how it can be super frozen as opposed to frozen, but anyway, my ground is frozen and it's naturally in, you know, it's already attached, so why move it? Now I'm going to take, I'm going to try to get a uh, small stick or a uh, uh, thistle head and mark the very end of that shadow. That thistle head was too big. I want to get a pretty accurate measurement. I'll just go with that little twig. I'm going to come back in about, you know, whatever time, 20, 30 minutes, something like that. And then we'll have a shadow line that we can determine, like all the survival books say, you put one foot on one end of the shadow, one foot on the other end, and then with the way you're facing is a north-south line. So the way I've always remembered is I'm left-handed so I always put my left foot on the first mark, then I will be facing north. Okay guys, obviously with this type of method, there's one fatal flaw in it, and that's you need sun. <laughs> Just like with solar fire, it doesn't really do a whole lot of good in the rain. I marked my stick yesterday, and about 20 minutes later, the clouds moved in, I couldn't finish up. So this is day two. So basically I've got my, my shadow stick there, and I'm going to mark this spot with just a little twig. And to be honest with you, I think I could draw some conclusions right now because I marked, it's earlier in the afternoon, so it would be like this would be my first mark. And the mark that I did yesterday could be my second mark. But I'm still going to wait here for a little bit and see because I know I've got a fixed point on the second mark. I want to see if this shadow does an arc or if it truly is a straight line. I want to see how accurate this method is. And to be honest, I've never done this before. So, you know, I've, I've read about it, a lot of theory. I've got a lot of theory in my mind, but, um, you know, you got to practice this stuff for yourself. I know it's uh, probably not going to be, you know, dead nuts on north and south, but it'll give me a general direction. Anyway, we got the first spot marked, and I want to see how this this is a true line going over to my second mark. Okay guys, so this is this was my first mark. This is now going to be my second mark. And if I had the patience, of course, that one was about 2.30 yesterday, now it's about noon. But anyway, these three marks are actually in a pretty good line with them. It looks like it, you know, it doesn't arc or anything. It looks like
like it's a pretty good line. So I'm just going to take this bigger stick and kind of, you know, it's a little crooked, but kind of line them up. Okay, just like that. Now that is my east-west line. This way being east. And like I said before, the way I've always remembered it is I'm left-handed. I put my left hand, my left foot on the first mark and my right foot on the second mark. So in theory, I'm facing north now. Let's get out my compass and see how accurate this is. Okay guys, so what I've done is basically set an azimuth for 270 degrees. It really doesn't matter whether it would be 90 degrees or 270, just as long as it's not straight up zero or 180. Because I want to line this edge of my compass along my stick and then I'll be able to see Oh, sorry about that. I'll be able to see how many degrees off this method actually is. Okay guys, I know it's hard to see that, but really, for my area, it doesn't seem to be that far off. It looks like it's 10 degrees, something like that. So if I use this stick to represent the needle of the compass, true north, you know, I'm approximately... Oh, Right around there or so. Now in an ideal world, those sticks would be perfectly perpendicular to each other. I'll move you so you can kind of see they're off a little bit. Okay, so you can see they're off a little bit, but not too much. I mean, that's, that's pretty darn close for, for rough navigation in my area. Now this is, you know, the beginning of March. In a northern state, I'm not sure how this would work in a southern state or way east or way west, but for me in my area, for real rough navigation, this is pretty accurate. All I want to do now is just pick the compass up just to double check that it's not, I mean it is laying pretty flat, you know, maybe hold it Wait for me a little bit, just double check, rock it back and forth, see if the needle's free, just double checking everything. Lay it back down as close as I can. That's pretty accurate, guys. All right, now we're facing south and I've got the stick lined up like we had it before. The stick is true north-south. Now when I say pretty accurate, keep in mind, I'm talking relatively. And the longer you go, the further distance you go, that angle that you're off is going to compound how far your distance is off. In other words, it looks, sure, it looks pretty, pretty accurate right now. This is true north-south. And our line is, that we did from the shadow stick is about like this. I mean, pretty soon this is going to you know, make you pretty far off. But as far as real rough navigation, that's not too bad. We'll take a look at one other thing, and I know it's hard for you probably to see. I may pick up the camera, but my shadow, it's 1220 now, so it's about as good as it's going to get. But my shadow is basically pointing the same direction that my shadow stick is. Now if it was a later time in the day, obviously this wouldn't work, but right around noon, I'm pointing, that's about as close as you're going to get to perpendicular to that uh, east-west line. So that's pretty good. All right, guys. Oh, well, rocking a little more modern eyewear now. But uh, anyway, I hope you liked this video. It was fun for me to do this experiment and see exactly how accurate this is. Um, the shadow stick method looks like it's a pretty good deal for my area at this particular time. I'm going to experiment more with it and see if it's uh, the same degree of accuracy come summer, stuff like that. Also, if you folks in southern or eastern or western states would like to do this, I'd be interested to hear how accurate it is for you folks. You know, like I said, I think I was within 10 degrees. That's, that's not too bad. Um, this method seems to be fairly valid. You could do this method or 
like I said, around noon or so, follow your shadow and it looks to be pretty close. Later on in the afternoon, four or five o'clock in the, in the afternoon or early in the morning, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. But straight up noon, it looks like it's pretty accurate with your shadow. All right guys, hope you liked the video. You take care.